This is my garage slash office slash video and photo studio. And I'm not just gonna show off things I've bought to run my video production company over the past five years. I'm gonna try to share what I've learned working from home over the last eight years. And hopefully you can take away some tips for how to turn your workspace into something that's more productive and allows you to focus better, no matter how big or small that room is. And this video isn't made to brag at all. I've slowly worked my way up to having more space to work and more gear to get that work done. But now that I'm in a three car deep garage, I have some more space to do the different types of work that I need to do, whether that's creating or editing or filming or planning or storing my equipment. All those things we'll cover in this kind of studio garage office tour. When we first moved here about a year and a half ago and I decided to make this garage my office, my workspace, I knew there are five different kinds of areas I wanted to create to be the most productive. The first was a place for my computer with a desk, probably an option to stand. Number two, a production area for both filming and for photography. Number three, a place to brainstorm and plan things out. Number four, gear storage. I have a lot of equipment and I didn't want to have to look at it and I wanted it to be organized really well. Number five, I wanted kind of a lounge area for reading, conversation, and just something different than sitting at a desk. And now I definitely have not always had this much space to work in, but even when I worked out of a spare bedroom, I tried to make sure I had one space that was for storing my gear and equipment that was organized, one place for working focused wise, a way to set up for filming and that sort of thing. So no matter how much space you have, hopefully you can take something out of this video for how to set up your work environment too. And one quick note, I've bought almost everything you'll see on this tour. I've accumulated it over years and years, but I'll specifically mention anything that was given to me by a company for a view or otherwise. Okay, let's get started. To kick off the tour, I'll start at my desk. It is an uplift 80 inch by 30 inch Douglas fir standing desk. I want enough room for two monitors to look at and two studio monitor speakers so I got pretty much the widest desk that I could find that would allow me to stand at it. Honestly, my computer setup hasn't really changed much over the past five years. I'm still rocking a 2013 Mac Pro with two old school Thunderbolt displays. Maybe I'll upgrade to the newer Mac Pro and the Pro Display XDR that were just announced, but for now, these are still going strong. I have two Mackie MR5 Mark III studio monitor speakers on Soundrise Pro studio monitor stands. So they're closer to ear height and then I have them angled towards me as well. I connect those via TRS cables into a Scarlett 18i8 from Focusrite that I used to use for podcasting too, but now I basically just use it to hook up my speakers, and I like that I can have a physical dial for both my speakers and my headphones. For headphones, I go back and forth between using two different kinds of monitor headphones, the Sony MDR7506s, and the Audio-Technica M30Xs. I use a Logitech Wireless Solar Keyboard K760 and a Logitech MS Master mouse. If I'm doing a video chat, I'll use the Logitech C920 webcam, and I actually don't even really run a proper microphone at this setup anymore because if I'm recording a podcast or care a lot about the audio quality, I'll go into my studio area to do that. For hard drives, the C has sent me two different RAID hard drive system I've been using for the past year or so as my main backups. The first is the two big dock, 20 terabyte. I put my SD cards right into the front of this one to offload footage, and then it's mirrored automatically with a RAID 1 setup to the two 10 terabyte drives. Then when that one fills up, I'll use their newer 16 terabyte non-dock version that they recently sent me to try too. I did my best to hide the wires and to keep this setup clean whether the desk is at a standing or sitting height. I stand about half the time I'm working, but when I really need to focus or single task on something like editing a video, I tend to sit down and wear headphones. It makes me feel more kind of tethered to the desk and I'm less likely to just wander away or to get distracted. Overall, I'm really happy with my desk setup and I spend most of my working hours at it even though some of the stuff is five, six years old, it's still working great. I can still export videos. I can still do my editing and that's all you really need. So maybe I'll update it eventually, but for now, it's good enough. Now to the studio area. On one wall, I have a triple paper roll holder. The yellow color came in extremely handy uh, when I did product photos with my wife for the SwitchPod Kickstarter launch, and I get all of those paper rolls from Savage Paper. I did a full video all about this triple paper holder thing when I first got it, 
and I still get frustrated that if you leave up the paper rolls indefinitely, the cardboard tubes slowly bend and kind of bow in the middle and the paper starts to show wrinkles, but I prefer to just leave them up than to have to install a specific color each time I want to use one. So that's just something I deal with. On the opposite side of the paper rolls, I have a Canon C200 that I use as my main camera. And then for my B camera, I have a Canon C100 Mark II with a 55 to 250 millimeter lens for that more zoomed in side angle shot that I use. Then I use a Manfrotto 420B combo boom stand, one of my favorite stands that there is, to hoist another C100 Mark II with a lightweight 40 millimeter pancake lens as my overhead camera. Then I mount a Rode NTG3 shotgun microphone to capture my audio. In the middle of the studio area, I use an Ikea Carl B countertop that I install adjustable legs onto. Podcasting mics and audio recorders sit on one side of that. And then I use a single Aperture 120D with a light dome, which was given to me by Aperture to review, to light my YouTube videos and do my B-roll filming. Sometimes I'll add a kicker light on the opposite corner to add some definition or just kind of an outline to the product, but mainly I'm just using one single light to film my videos nowadays. Under the table, I have a couple DBX-286S preamps to help power the Shure SM7Bs I use for podcasting and voiceover recording. I run those into a Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 to record that audio. Then I mount an Aperture VS5 monitor, which was also given to me, on top of the audio recorder to give me a preview of what that overhead camera angle sees. I then have two 10-year-old televisions on Vivo rolling TV carts that I got off Amazon that I use to preview what some of the other camera angles see. Now, it's nice to have that large preview of the image that I'm capturing, but these stands actually take up quite a bit of room in this small amount of space, so I might ditch them eventually and just use a smaller camera monitor on each camera instead. In just the studio end of the garage, on each of the walls, the garage door, and the ceiling, I've hung sound absorption sheets from Automute. These help reduce echo on this end of my office, on this end of the garage, which helps a lot when recording audio. They're just held up by these really small Versa hooks that I bought at Home Depot, and they hold the weight. Or I've clipped some of them to the actual garage door, so... I have to unclip those if I do want to open the garage. For motion controlled slider shots or really slow rotating product shots like I did in the Canon EOS R review, I use the Kessler second shooter. And I just try to have that built all the time because if I don't have it built, then I won't use it. And then in case I have to move everything out for a photo shoot or take individual pieces of gear that are here for a client trip or something like that, I tape markers on the ground for where everything goes. Before we continue with the tour, I wanna to thank Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. If you're like me and you've been this close to finishing the edit on a video for a client, but it just needs that one more shot that you either don't have time to go record yourself or you just forgot to get, or maybe you need aerial footage of a place that you're not officially licensed to fly a drone at, that's where Storyblocks video comes in to help. You can search for the perfect video clip filtered by category, resolution or the length of the clip, and then you can download the clips you want, test them out in the edit, and hit export. You can use them for your YouTube videos, client work, what have you. They also have motion graphics templates for After Effects and Apple's motion of things like lower thirds, logo reveals, or typography effects. If you wanna learn more about Storyblocks video and their unlimited download plan, go to storyblocks.com slash calebwajic to learn more. That's C-A-L-E-B-W-O-J-C-I-K. Let's get into storage. I own a lot of video and photo gear to run my company, and I wanted to A, keep it safe, B, keep it organized, and C, I really didn't wanna look at any of it all the time. So the first thing we did was we got a rolling toolbox with a lock on it. You can get this at a Home Depot or a Lowe's, and I got this idea from Wistia. This is where we keep the more valuable, smaller pieces of gear, things like cameras, lenses, flashes, microphones, memory cards, et cetera. Then for the bigger items and to hide the washer and dryer that's in the garage, I bought this huge wardrobe closet from Ikea. There are very specific spots for things like my really large stand bags and travel case for my lights. I use clear plastic bins to store things like film or old hard drives or GoPro accessories. And overall, it's just nice to have a bunch of storage behind closet doors so everything's out of sight. The next area is the lounge area. If a client comes by, we sit here to chat. If I'm working on a video script, cranking through email, or watching an online course, I might just couch it to switch it up. I also keep my filmmaking magazines here when I need a little bit of a work break, 
and I printed a few SpaceX posters for one wall. On the other wall, I keep my surfboards that I definitely need to learn how to ride better because I'm too afraid to paddle out into the lineup and just fall on my face. Next, we have the planning area, which is basically just a six foot by four foot Cortec glass magnetic dry erase board in black. If I'm overwhelmed, I need to mind dump or write out a quick packing list of the gear that I need for a trip. This is what I use. Leading up to launching SwitchPod, this was completely covered with post-it notes because there was always ideas coming to my head. I just wanted to get them out and put them up on the board and then I would kind of organize them into a better order to get stuff done. So I think having some place, whether that's a, a notebook, if you don't have room for something on a wall, just something that you can do quick planning and write stuff out to get it out of your head. Sometimes off of digital is nice too to make it a little bit more tangible. And so I use that big black whiteboard for that. When we first moved in, this garage had really gross lights. So I replaced the fluorescent lights in the garage with Philips T8 LED tubes. They're supposed to be daylight balanced, but they kind of have a weird tint to them. So I always turn them off when I film. I've been trying to find a dimmable color temperature adjustable video style light fixture that fits into that standard tube light in garages, but I haven't been able to find anything. So if you know of anything, please let me know in a comment below. They'd have to match, you know, the ballast and electrical amperage and all that kind of stuff. I just haven't found anything yet. I use a few Philips Hue lights behind my desk or in a couple lamps. If I'm working into the evening and I don't want those bright overhead lights on, and when the weather's nice, I do open the garage door. But the worst part about setting up a garage studio is that A, there are rarely windows in garages, mine has none, and B, there's no pre-installed ventilation. So that means running fans and stuff like that when it gets really warm and making sure I go outside and get sunlight and that sort of thing. But garages aren't the ideal environment to just like keep yourself in all the time because it gets stuffy, it gets warm, and uh, you don't know what time of day it is. Behind the storage, I have a battery charging station that's hidden just basically on top of the washer and dryer. It's also where I store our printer and other photo backdrops. And then through the garage to help with echo, I've added a bunch of acoustical sound absorption panels from AutoMute just to help reduce that echo in this empty garage. Like I mentioned at the start, I've slowly built up to having this much room to work in and knowing exactly what I need out of the workspace, as well as this much gear and equipment to use to do my work. I encourage you to think about your office and where you work, no matter how big or small it is, and figure out ways to streamline creation, simplify your storage and have less stuff, and think about different areas or maybe devices for specific kinds of tasks like making or editing or planning or learning. All the gear and equipment are linked below. I put a lot of time and effort into making sure that I mention all the things that I am showing here in this space. If you want to learn more about me and my entrepreneurial journey up to this point, you can watch this video right here or subscribe to this YouTube channel to learn more about filmmaking, photography, and how to make a living with your camera. I've been Kayla Wojcik. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.